Well, hey friends, it's Clever Trev here, and guess what? Stardew Valley has finally dropped update patch 1.42 on the console. I'm playing on the PS4 right now. I've been really looking forward to this update. So in this video, we're going to basically be covering the patch notes for 1.42, all the new things that they added to multiplayer, the quality of life changes, all those things. And I would describe this patch as like a f uh, end game kind of patch, but also really polishing up the multiplayer stuff. So first thing you'll notice here, we have a new farm, the Four Corners Farm. This is great for multiplayer. The land is divided into four parcels, each with its own perk, perfect for a group. And we're actually going to be starting a new farm, and I'm going to show you the whole farm and how it works. Uh, but also, a new perk that they added is your animal preference. There's different breeds of animals. So if I cycle through these different dogs and cats, look at there's different ones. You're used to just these two basic boring dog and cat right here, but now we got different breeds. And I named my my farm update 1.42. And apparently there's also new shirts, new pants, a bunch of new stuff. And unfortunately the servers are down right now on Stardew Valley, but one thing I would also show you is they added a shared money perk. So if you're playing multiplayer, you're able to have four split like banks, essentially. So instead of sharing money and arguing about money and stuff, you can just have your own money pot. You don't have to share it with others. So we're going to get a, a, a new save started on our Four Corners farm, and I'm going to show you a little preview of it. We're going to check out all the different four, four corners of the farm, and then I'm going to read all the different patch notes for you. So we'll go through all the different things that they've added, end game features, content, multiplayer, a lot of bugs that they squash, new items, shirts, stuff like that. So first things first, let's check out the new map, Four Corners, specifically designed for multiplayer. And as you'll notice, some of it is a little blocked off, but you can you can still get to everybody. So let's see if I can't chop my way through. So if you look right here, I can't even get through this little passageway. And there's a farm over there that you can't see. But you so you're gonna actually have to go down here to get over there. So eventually, once you upgrade your axe and stuff, you'll be able to get through all those little passageways. Here's where the greenhouse is, and I would say the greenhouse is like the middle of the map. And if you go up to the right, there's a cabin, up to the left cabin, down to the left, there's a cabin, down to the right, there's a cabin. Kind of what you'd expect from a map called Four Corners. Let's check out this bottom left map real quick, or this bottom left cabin out first. I got my sidekick here, any com any commentary there, pal? I see you watching. Well, goddamn, you're looking good. Looking real good. Thanks. Oh yeah, we'll be cooking, we'll be in the kitchen. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention, because the servers are down, I wasn't able to do an actual multiplayer server. Normally there'd be a cabin right over here somewhere, I forget exactly. So imagine a cabin down there. Now let's check out the other bottom right cabin. So you can tell this bottom left segment's kind of cut off. If we wanted to actually leave our farm, this is where you go to actually leave your farm. So let's go to the bottom right cabin. Obviously, you gotta throw a little water in the dish. So, here's the bottom right. If we're doing four corners multiplayer, I think the cabin would be just right around here somewhere. So, let's get all the way down here. Oh, and there's a little. This uh, You can tell this is for like a miner, because I believe uh, you're gonna have constantly having copper ore and stuff pop up here. So this might be more for like the mining kind of guy, if you like to go mining. So they, I think they divided it where there's... I believe the top left uh, farm is probably better for farming. It seemed like there's a lot of lot of open space. So finally, let's check out the top left one. Maybe this one is better for fishing. Looks like there's a little water there. Or no, where did the top left? Uh, I forget. Where did we? I'll go up here. A lot of empty space. You just have to chop down a lot of trees. So, okay, those are the four different farms for four corners. Check it out. Oh, it looks different here, even. And one thing I'll point out let's turn on this music a little bit. Sorry, I should have done that right away. Guess what they added? Let's go down to zoom level. Let's zoom out a bit. Check it out. They, you can zoom out now on console. I've always wanted to do that. 
Um, not a, other too many big changes here. I think everybody else here might be the same. I think they might have added some more people that you can marry. There's definitely new craftables. So let's start going through the patch notes. Sorry to bore you with everything so far, but I just wanted to show off that new map and essentially how you can start plotting out your cooperative game. So, let's start going through the patch notes. And I'm just going to read off the patch notes I found off of um, UpdateCrazy.com. So, Update 4.2 is out on the PS4 and Xbox One now. Uh, it already came out on the Switch and the PC, I believe. So, I'm going to start reading through the patch notes. Bear with me. And I will put up a link in my description if you just want to read them yourself and don't want to list, listen to me yap on forever. So, here we go. Added a movie theater unlocked in late game with related content and features. Added 14 heart events for every spouse. So, basically when you get married, even after you're married, you still have more stuff you can do with your spouse to increase your relationship even further. They uh, added new events and dialogue, including a new heart event for Caroline. Added clothing items equipped on the player. Replaces former clothing appearance options. Added clothing ta tailoring and dyeing. So it sounds like you can change the colors of your clothes and stuff. Added 24 new hairstyles, including bald heads. Okay. Added the Four Corners farm map, which we've already covered. That's where we are right here. Um, divides lands into four areas with their own perks. Um, added fish ponds to breed fish and produce items. Now, I don't know what that means, but like I just said, you can add fish ponds to breed fish and produce items. Sounds awesome. They also added a bunch of new items. 181 shirts, 35 hats, 14 pants, including dresses, skirts, and shorts. Two boots, 38 decorative items obtained in various ways. 17 new flooring options, two new secret notes, two fish, the flounder and the midnight carp. So two new fish, cool. Artifact troves can be broken open by Clint to yield artifacts. Interesting. Caviar row and aged row. Not sure what that is. They added a dark sword, a deluxe scarecrow, given when you collect all rare crows, has doubled the radius. So now if you get all the rare scarecrows, you can get a new scarecrow with double the radius. I love that. Dinosaur mayonnaise, process from dinosaur eggs. There's a golden scythe. They added a mini jukebox where anything on the farm or in farm buildings to play previously heard movies, music. Place anywhere, so you can put it somewhere and it'll play music for you. Cool. Mini fridges. Mini fridges placed inside to extend your fridge capacity. Cool, cool. Rice crop they added. Seafoam pudding. Finish, finishing level 9 cooking recipe. F sorry, fishing level 9. They added a shrimp cocktail. Learn from the Queen of Sauce episode on winter 25, year 2. So new recipe, year 2, winter of the 25th. Uh, squid ink they added, sunflower honey produced by bee houses, tea bushes, tea leaves, and green tea. Cool, I like tea. They added a training rod, easier fishing but only catches common fish. <laughs> they added tree fertilizer, non-fruit trees grow more quickly. Ooh, I like that. Uh, they added a warp totem to the desert, a wilted bouquet, crafted from a bouquet, which lets you break up with NPCs you're dating. <laughs> So you give them a wilted bouquet and you break up with them. That's sad. They added a workbench. Lets you craft with uh, ingredients in adjacent chests. Oh. So you put a workbench next to a chest and you don't have to grab that crap out of the chest. You can just uh, craft stuff. I love that a lot. That's good. Wood shepherd. Uh, breaks hardwood and drift one into wood. Sweet. Sometimes you run out of regular wood and you got a ton of hardwood. Why not? So they added new mine content. This is big. A quarry mine shaft dungeon with new haunted skull and sludge monsters and a golden scythe. Hmm. Prehistoric floors in the skull hat cavern with a new pepper rex monster. Ooh, new monster. Um, new mining content. They, they also added rare alternative levels in the 1 to 120 level mines after unlocking the quarry. Similar to the quarry mine shaft dungeon. Not sure what that means, but I like it. Added a shed upgrade. Doubles the interior size of your shed. Wow, that's sweet. They added cat and dog breeds, selectable from the new character customization, or Shrine of Illusion. Oh, so the Shrine of Illusion must be your uh, 
cosmetic change in your cats, dogs, maybe even your uh, your appearance, stuff like that. They added Krobus as a potential roommate if you're unmarried. Added a desert trader to sell new items. They added a trash bar to clean up trash around town in year three and over. So if you played the game for three years, you can add a trash bear. <laughs> Sweet. Added four new monster eradication goals and prizes. Uh, I'm not sure if that's from the Hunter's Guild or whatever. Uh, added four new museum reward levels for donating 35, 70, 80, and 90 items. That's good. Added trash can upgrades. Purchasable from Clint. Gives 15 to 60% of trashed items value as money. They also added a new sunroom in Pierre and Caroline's house. Cool, cool. Added the ability to perform, perform various emotes through a new menu. So you can do emotes now. Added a new farm building, the Desert Obelisk. Like I said, I think that's how you change your cosmetics. They added winter flooring sprites. They added a hidden sub subplot. If you turn children into doves, spoiler, whoa, check the television on Fall 26, then watch, then visit the witch's hut for a reoccurring effect on, and fish on the Four Corners farm for a one-time effect. No idea what that means. Added experimental support for letting farmhands move buildings. Use the move building permission command. Oh, this is kind of more PC stuff. Added a new trash bin in the front of Jojo Mart. So if you like digging that trash, go to Jojo Mart, new trash bin. Added map export feature. Expect, uh, so that's another PC thing it looks like. V-Sync option. Disabling V-Sync may improve overall frame rate at the expense of frame rate stability. Stardew Valley 1.42 update added. An NPC profile access through the social tabs. Tracks birthdays, their like, dislike, skips as you discover them in game though. So you do have to discover them and then it'll show you more details. Hmm. Added advanced crafting info option which shows more info on the crafting menu. Including the number of times crafted and the number of ingredients available. I don't know if that's available. I didn't notice that. Let's check that out. Uh... I don't see it here. Maybe that's only for PC. A um, lot of new, a lot of more patch notes. Um, let's keep going though. Um, craft uh, add a, a new Easter egg on the title screen. Junimo Mart cat, ugh, Junimo Cart has completely redone and is now actually fun. Junimo Cart is now fun. Whatever that means. Dressy dressers can now be used to store clothing, hats, shoes, and rings. When you catch a silver or gold quality fish, a perfect catch now increases the quality by one. This is the only way to get iridium quality fish. Mm -hmm. You can now put hats on your children, once they can walk, that is. You can now play Elliot's piano. You can now put gemstone and Junimo huts to affect the color of new Junimos. Divorced spouses no longer attend your wedding. Divorced spouses no longer treat their exes normally during festivals. Auto grabbers now work in the coop. Two, successfully parrying a slime attack now prevents the slimed debuff. Seaweed can now be forged along the bottom shore of the tidal pool beach. The Adventurer's Guild now sells any boots you already found in mine chests. That's nice. You can no longer load saves created in a newer version of the game than you have. You can no longer load saves created in a newer version of the game. This only affects future versions of the game. Whatever. I don't know. It's kind of scary. Hmm. Added optional separate money in multiplayer. Okay, so this is, now we're into the multiplayer changes. So uh, a couple more minutes, then we'll be done here. So like I, we showed earlier, added optional separate money in multiplayer. They added support for private chat messages. They added more multiplayer server messages. It added a ping chat command. That's only in PC, PC, ban, PC. Added multiplayer synchronization for Okay. This is a big one. They added multiplayer synchronization for daily luck, bulletin board quests, trains, lightning bolts, mine fog events, lost book collections, merchant limited stock, drum flute blocks, adjustments to the fishing bobber position in its midair, the animation when a player has a fish on the line. It used to be a little different. You know, I might have good luck, and if you're playing with me, you might have bad luck. Now it looks like it just made it all the same across the board. When creating a new new multiplayer form, the starting cabin's now option defaults to one instead of none. That makes sense. Each player now has a separate mailbox and spouse porch area. Good, 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 good. 
different different mailboxes is big. Each player can now build a separate cellar. Uh, when a player drops an item in multiplayer, other nearby players now have priority for picking it up. So you can just drop something and it'll somebody else will grab it instead of making. That's really nice instead of having to trade it with them. You can now see other player scores during certain festivals in multiplayer, probably like the egg hunt or something. Quests in multiplayer now set difficulty based on the highest level player. In the Skull Cavern, mine shafts now drop players to the same level in multiplayer. But that makes sense. In multiplayer, many random checks now use the team's average luck instead of only the host's luck. If connecting to a multiplayer server fails, the game will now retry internally before giving up. The reward for completing the bulletin board bundle is now applied to all players in multiplayer. Sweet. Moving a shipping bin no longer leaves behind its lid for other players on a multiplayer farm. That sounds like a bug. So they also added a bunch of quality life additions. And man, there's a lot of more stuff to go through. Uh, let's go a little bit longer here. So quality of life changes. Added the ability to rearrange the museum artifacts without having to donate a new one. Added the ability to reread received lizard letters anytime via the collections tab. This one, uh, PC specific. A bit added ability to fill existing stacks in a chest from your inventory. Added notification when a tool being upgraded is ready. Oh, cool. Um, so a lot of just little uh, little things here. Uh, farm animals standing on crops no longer pr pr protect the crop from being harvested, da da da. So, there's way too many more things for me to read. <laughs> it would take me another like hour probably, because I'm only like 20% through the patch notes. So that's how big this patch is, which is, which is awesome if you ask me. There's, as mu you know, as much as I love this game already, it's crazy that they could add even more stuff. So, uh, click that link in my description if you want to continue reading the patch notes. Uh, I think we covered the really more important ones, but there's obviously plenty more to cover. A lot of different little things that they added. End of life things, quality of life, multiplayer things, some new settings here as you can see. So I'll leave it at that, friends. Thanks for tuning in. It's Clever Trev. I love Stardy, and I love you. Take care, friends. Bye-bye.